Hello and welcome everyone to an exciting webcast because it's one that a lot of people have been waiting for, which is a series of webcasts on 100% ownership in the UAE mainland. We've been waiting for it for probably close to two decades and it finally came to us and can now be implemented. So to help you understand how does that impact newcomer to the region or people already operating LLCs or branches? I have our uh, in-house expert, Hermani Arison, joining us freshly from Abu Dhabi. Hermani, good morning. Good morning. Very excited to have you uh, with us. So let's jump right into this. So the background uh, on these changes, can you explain us where they did come from? Mm -hmm, absolutely. So in December 2020, the UAE government published a federal decree law amending key provisions of the UAE companies, commercial companies law. The two most notable structural changes arising from the amendment were firstly, the removal of the requirement for foreign branches to appoint a UAE national service agent. Mm -hmm. And secondly, the removal of the requirement for 51% of the shares in a limited liability company to be held by a UAE national. Okay, so these are very topical changes. So when did these changes take effect in practice? Yeah, good question. The, the changes to a foreign branch NSA requirement or national service agency requirement took effect on the 31st of March of this year. While the changes to the LLC ownership requirements were officially implemented on the 1st of June. Irrespective of what we found in the press, which says the, the gates are open now for everyone. So it is now open, but not for a, a long time. We get that. So let's look into the branches. Uh, what do these changes mean if I am uh, a branch of a foreign company? Yeah, absolutely. So for a foreign branch, this means that a UAE national service agent is no longer required in order for a foreign branch to obtain a license to operate in the UAE. So previously, the appointment of a national service agent was required, and this appointment was generally in consideration for an annual fee. So the immediate impact is a reduction of operating costs by removing the cost of retaining the UAE national to act as agent, and also streamlining the operational processes for, for a foreign branch. Yeah, so that's already very useful and we will look mm -hmm. uh, in a separate webcast at the process of uh, uh, how this can be uh, changed, adjusted, optimized. Now, what do these change mean for LLCs, which are uh, statistically the biggest number of entities mm -hmm. operating uh, in the UAE mainland? Yeah, this is a very exciting change and it means that technically 100% foreign ownership of LLCs is now permitted. I should add though, this is subject to two conditions. Okay. Firstly, that the activities of the company fall out of scope of activities deemed by a federal committee to have a strategic impact. Now, secondly, that the activities of the company fall within the scope of activities permitted to be undertaken by a 100% foreign owned company as determined by the departments of economic development in each emirate. So the two important conditions there. Okay, so let's uh, dig a little bit into the strategic impact. Uh, can you maybe give us an example of what activities have been deemed to have such a strategic impact? Yeah, we're all waiting for these details. It's, it'll be very interesting to see how they develop. So at the moment, details of these activities have not been published. But what we know from recent Dubai economy announcement mm -hmm. is that there is likely to be approximately seven categories of economic activities designated as having a strategic impact. But until this list is formally published, the information provided by the Abu Dhabi Department of Economic Development and the Dubai economy is helping to pave our understanding of the activities eligible for foreign ownership. Okay, so let's look uh, at the, uh, the, the other way around. Let's look at the positive list, the list that one can actually check and see if in Abu Dhabi or in Dubai, you are on the list and you can perhaps proactively act. Uh, can you give us uh, the, a couple of examples and, and perhaps illustrate why these publications are so important? Yeah, absolutely. So as I mentioned before, and as you've just mentioned, the, each Emirates Department of Economic Development has the authority to impose restrictions on foreign ownership of LLCs license within its jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. So a key factor to determine the impact of foreign ownership changes is therefore to understand what the licensing authority's position is with respect to the activities an entity conducts now or proposes to conduct. So turning to the Abu Dhabi Department of Economic Development, they were the yeah. first to publish a list of activities permitted to be undertaken by a wholly owned foreign LLC. But at the time of publication and since publication, there's been no indication of whether there'll be any restrictions attached to foreign ownership. It is understood that these may be imposed on a case-by-case -case basis. Yeah. So the Dubai, in contrast, the Dubai Department of Economic Development or the Dubai Economy published a list of permitted foreign ownership activities, as well as clarification, helpfully, that no additional fees, guarantees or capital will be required for full foreign ownership. This is a huge development. So we are expecting publication of similar lists from departments of economic development in the other Emirates, and we do look forward to reviewing and commenting on these in due course. So you already touched on some of the key differences uh, when explaining the current position of uh, Abu Dhabi and Dubai. Can you maybe uh, uh, zoom in on, on, on a couple of these pointers uh, specifically? Yeah, absolutely. So the first thing to note is that the lists of activities are different. Mm -hmm. And not just because the activity description is different, but because the categories of activities in some instances are notably different. So I'll give you an example, Jan. Yep. The Abu Dhabi DED list does not contain any trading activities, whereas the Dubai economy list covers a range of cross-sector trading activities. Additionally, the, the inclusion of the activity onshore and offshore oil and gas fields and facility services is particularly interesting for companies licensed in Abu Dhabi. It will be interesting to monitor the response of the Supreme Council for Financial and Economic Affairs, it was formerly known as the SPC, yep. to determine the implication of increased foreign ownership on the eligibility of such companies to obtain the approval of the, the uh, authority to conduct business in Abu Dhabi. So our understanding is that as the market and regulators adjust to the new foreign ownership requirements, the list that we see at present may change. And MHQ is monitoring these developments very closely. So we expect uh, several wave of announcement, but hey, at least uh, now we know what is on the table uh, and people can act. And I know that you and I will be talking about the process uh, that uh, LLCs uh, should actually take to assess and uh, then mm -hmm. possibly implement and optimize the structure. Uh, any immediate tips you would have now for a company looking to benefit from the foreign ownership uh, changes? Yes, absolutely. There's quite a bit to do uh, right now. We would recommend that you start by checking whether your license activities are contained in the existing lists for eligible foreign ownership activities. Mm -hmm. uh, secondly, consultation with your sector specific regulator, for example, the Supreme Council for Financial and Economic Affairs, yeah. will be important to assess the operational implications of increased foreign ownership. Thirdly, review your existing contractual arrangements with your UAE national shareholder to determine a smooth process for transitioning to 100% foreign ownership. Yeah. And then lastly, consider implementing structural improvements. This is a perfect opportunity to use new tools such as SPVs to protect business operation, enhance business continuity, and protect overall the company structure from any bumps in the road that you may encounter to achieve 100% foreign ownership. So that's uh, uh, quite a grocery shopping list. So uh, if people are interested, they can, uh, or they should, uh, start right away with the aim of implementing this between now and the, and the end of the year. Uh, yeah. Any last word on, on, on this, this process that uh, I may have forgotten? Yeah, one last point is the requirement for limited liability companies to update the MOAs by the uh -huh. 2nd of January 2022. So this, was, this is required to align their provisions with the amended procedure for convening and holding general meetings and was incorporated into the federal decree amending the commercial companies law I, I mentioned earlier. So our recommendation is to fulfill this requirement, incorporate it with uh, any other structural changes, whether that be ownership changes or any other change, just to yeah, consolidate the process and make it operationally easier for companies. 
So killing multiple boards with one stone, optimizing your structure, decreasing cost and remaining compliant. And uh, if, of course, you want to discuss uh, this uh, topic specific to your circumstances, you can always uh, contact uh, us at MHQ and Hermani in particular. And uh, next week, we are going to uh, look into some of these steps, specifics to uh, LLC, describe them, show them uh, how it can work in practice and how it is already being implemented now. Uh, uh, in practice and how you can improve your uh, business value and more importantly, the do's and don'ts. So we'll talk about this next week. Hermani, thank you very much and I wish you an excellent day ahead. Bye-bye. Thank you, Jan. Bye.